so now. But I want to ask you, when you would look at an American family, as you've written in your latest op-ed, can you look at the parents of a dead American soldier and say this was worth it? No, I can't. I can't. But, you know, one has to have... The truth is I can't. I, I would have to lower my eyes and say, and just be quiet, be ashamed in a sense. But at the same time, I can't say that for the people of Iraq in general. Uh, I, I, I think the picture is very different for Iraqis uh, coming out of the Saddam era than it is for the rest of the world in the United States. It's one of those contradictions that we have to live with. A war may be good from one point of view or maybe work out positively in the long run from one per people's point of view, in this case the Iraqi people's, and it may not from another. You were very honest in saying that you could not, in good conscience, tell Americans that this was worth it. What do you think was your greatest misjudgment? How were you lulled into such a completely false sense of what turned out? You were the one who told Cheney, who told everybody else, and they quoted it ad infinitum, that the Americans would be greeted as liberators with sweets and flowers. It simply didn't turn out that way. I don't think I was lulled into anything. I made errors of judgment, which is a different thing. That is, and my, my judgments were in part based upon the hope that things would turn out differently. Now you may say, what right do you have to hope? Think of me not as a writer who's sitting down writing an academic treatise, but as an activist for democracy, for a liberal future, for that part of the world that has seen nothing but abysmal darkness for so many decades. As an activist in the Middle East, as a liberal democratic activist, you cannot but be anything other than a person who almost at all times is hoping against all experience. That is, he knows that, that the history may read things one way, but you have to, you think there is a sliver of a 5% chance that something better can come out. It is your responsibility, but, morally but the question, speaking, I agree to take with that you. 5% chance. I, I agree with you that uh, the moral thing is to try to fight for liberty, uh, to overthrow dictatorships, but clearly people think that you were naive, that you didn't know enough about the current day uh, Iraq state. You didn't know enough uh, about what was actually going on there and that you lived along with the proponents of the Iraq war in a sort of green zone bubble. I mean, I was there in the red zone and it was really bad. And yet from the green zone after the liberation, we just heard nothing but you know, this is great, this is going to be great, you're wrong, there's no insurgency, there's no looting, there's no this, there's, there's no that. I never said, I, I absolutely never said there was no insurgency. I, I may have been naive, I have, may have made errors of judgment, but, uh, but I, my books will stand the test of time or not. Question is, if you look at a book like Republic of Fear, the only question that's interesting is not whether somebody else used it as a justification for war, but whether it was a correct description of what was going on in Iraq or not. So do you when think you, you were like used in silence? Do you believe that you were used by those who no. wanted to go to war? Or I don't write books. Other people do what they will do. You release a book, it's like releasing a child into the world. You do what, how other people use it is not your responsibility. I was for that war, as you correctly pointed out. I made other errors of judgment, but I warned against them. For instance, I put, I hoped against hope that the many of the individuals who are today rule Iraq, that the political class that would come into power as a result of the war would behave very differently than it has. In 1993, in Cruelty and Silence, I warned what would happen if Shiites behaved like victims, if Shiites thought that, that they were in a competition uh, over victimhood with their brethren, that Shiites, because they are the majority, had a very special historic responsibility towards this country. I made those warnings. As it turned out, the Shiite political class put in power by American force of arms on April 10th, 2003, did behave selfishly, did think only of themselves, and even began to lose the very idea of Iraq. Now let me ask you the next obvious question. You have written, and many of us believe, that the allowing Syria to, to be abandoned is a moral issue. Not only a moral, but a strategic issue. Do you not feel that precisely because of what you said about Iraq and how it failed to turn out and how it became such a nightmare, that is one of the big reasons that 
no one, certainly not the Obama administration, is planning to do the moral thing and stop the slaughter in Syria? I, I agree there are very many dangers. There is nothing simple about intervening in another country. I'm not even sure the United States should do it. I hope the Turks will do it, frankly. I don't know how the intervention, I don't have recipes and simple answers. I just say, as a human being watching this catastrophe unfold, somebody needs to help those poor Syrians out there to stop the numbers of dead increasing. Because the more those dead increase, the greater are the chances that Syria will never work as a country again. And the greater are the chances that you, that the dead down the line, I mean years down the line, will keep on going up and up and up. So it, it, it's a simple matter here, intervention to reduce the killing, to stop the killing, to eliminate or at least decrease the killing, will help increase the chances of a stable Syria surviving. They, we have certain very big questions on the plate at the moment, Christian. The question is, the whole Arab world is coming apart. The seams in different ways, in different places, at different times. So it, 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 there are some very big questions involved here beyond just Syria, although I think the intervention should be justified on the basis of Syrian lives, saving of Syrian lives. And uh, even in Iraq, I mean, there, the, ch the, move, the removal of the change in a part of the world, from a world that was dominated by dictators to a world that is losing those dictators one by one, but does not yet know where it, it, to what kind of a universe it is entering. Everything is the unknown. Everything is fraught with danger in the Middle East today. Is that generally a good thing or generally a bad thing? There are no simple questions. How do we even measure it? Kenan Makia, thank you so much indeed for joining me. Thank you, Christian. And while it's been 10 years since Saddam Hussein was toppled from his pedestal, what about the pedestal itself? At first, Saddam's statue was replaced by a so-called freedom sculpture, but that didn't last. And today, as you can see, the pedestal stands empty in Ferdos Square, an eerie reminder of the strong man who used to loom over the nation. Meantime, Iraqis continue the arduous task of rebuilding from the rubble of war.